spiritual intelligence is the series. This is the third installment in the script. Spiritual intelligence is an accurate understanding of the realm of God. You know, an accurate understanding of the realm of God. You know, you know that we, we've, we've not even completely understood the realm of man. The, the, have you observed that the more we understand the realm of man, the easier our life became. The more we understood the realm of man, the more we understood, the more we discovered the laws, the principles that, are, that govern our space within our realm, the more easy our life became. It was a major discovery that was made in aviation that opened up that industry. We've thought in this church before there are three forces that interplay to cause a plane to fly. Before the Wright brother came, they were, they've only discovered two of those three forces. So what they actually patented was not the aeroplane but the discovery of the third law. Immediately the third leg was established, the plane flew. And that is the reason why somebody can greet you good morning in Abuja and greet you good afternoon from London. Six hours is there. This same journey that takes six hours now used to take months. So the more we understood the realm that we were operating, the easier our life became. So the same thing also, you you need to come to a place of accurate understanding of the realm of God. Because in the beginning, the Bible says that in Genesis 1, that God created the heavens and the earth. So there is is an understanding that we must come into that, that 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 will cause our life to be complete. Is the understanding of the realm of God in addition to the level of understanding that we have of our realm. So the more we understand the realm of God, the more spiritually intelligent we become. Spiritual understanding, spiritual intelligence also includes an understanding of everything that belongs to you in God. The resources that are available to you in God. He has blessed us with spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So there are resources that are yours. The Bible says that we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. I mean, you are heir of real stuff. There are not things, most of those things you enter into in eternity, most of those things you are supposed to convert from spiritual edifices to material realities. As in, you have real inheritance in Christ, real ones. Inheritance that you can liquidate. The reason why I don't have anything against what, who the person we call the prodigal son. Because when you, look, when you look at the story of the prodigal son, people don't like that guy. They said he was this, he loves prostitute and stuff. The guy understood stuff here. He understood that everything that belongs to your father belongs to you. I, I, don't, I can't wait for And in this kingdom, our father don't die. You understand? He doesn't die. Because that story is a story of God. That because God will not die. The inheritance that we have is not that the inheritance you enter into when God dies. The inheritance that you would take hold of while your father is alive. And let me tell you, even if you waste it, he will still give you another one. As in you have real inheritance that you can liquidate and turn to real money to buy real things in the marketplace. The more we understand these things, the more spiritually grounded we become. So we must understand accurately the realm where God operates. Because everything that we, live, we need for life and godliness, they are available in the realm of God. We must understand the principles that govern that realm. The more you understand that realm, the easier your life becomes on earth. That's why Jesus started saying some things very, very instructive when he said anything you bind on earth, must adjust in heaven. 
Now, if you do some things on earth, if it doesn't adjust in heaven, it doesn't enter your life. So, he said he created the heavens and the earth. That is anything you declare on earth must adjust in heaven for that thing to enter your life physically. He said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When he was speaking to Moses, he said, ensure that you build according to the pattern that was shown you on the mount. That is, you must ensure that everything you start to do on the face of the earth, you must see a replica of it first in heaven. The reason why the, the, the tower of Babel did not fly was not because God had a problem with towers, because we have Buj Arab and all the tall towers right now. It was because there was no heavenly replica for that stuff. God had to come down from heaven to see what they were doing on earth. He said, let's go and see. Because they checked the master plan, they didn't see what they were building. So a lot of people go about trying to build stuff on earth that God has not built in heaven. So let's go and see. But if they were building something that God had done in heaven, God did not need to come and check. He said, no, they're in, they're in, they're in line. That's why I say, he said, when you pray in accordance with his will, he hears you. See, a lot of times we pray and pray and pray. We are praying our will, not his will. His will is settled in heaven. His will is his bill. He will pay. Now, when you begin to enter this kind of understanding, you, you've started entering into spiritual intelligence. And one of the truths that I want you to hold at the back of your heart as we look at this great series is that spiritual spirituality is a science and an art. It is both a science and an art. Spirituality is both a science and an art. As an art, it has form. As an art, it has style. There are postures. There are gestures. As an heart, there are postures. When you go down on your knee, it means something. So the, the art must agree with the science. Now, hypocrisy is when you have the form and you don't have the substance. You understand? The, the form must agree. That is, God does not have anything against the form. But God has started having problems with you when all you have is the form, you don't have the substance. The substance is the force. The heart is the form. The substance is the science. The life force behind the form. So he has nothing against the form. Is that a wish that all men lift up holy hands? It means something. If the form is nothing, why did he tell Jesus to kneel down? He said, bow and worship me. You know, when he was selecting, he was selecting the people that had not defiled themselves in the days of Elijah. He said, he said I still have men in this town who had not kissed the image of Baal. Who had not kissed the image of Baal. So the form is important. So don't tell me that dressing anyhow does not matter. It matters. Decency is still decency. You don't show things that are private. You see, that is why when you look at the temple that God built in the days of Moses, there are three, there are three layers of that temple. You have the outer court, you have the holy place, and you have the holies of holies. And your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have the outer court. You have the holy place. And you have the holies of holies. There are things that people should not see. In the body of a person. They should not see it. There are some things that are only reserved for your husband. 
If everybody sees it, you're a prostitute. Don't show us your breast. It's not, it, we don't, we're not supposed to see it. So the form is important. That was why when God was selling them to build the temple, he, he took his time to explain to them how to draw the cutting, the length of it. It's important. So the form is important to God as much as the substance is important to him. So it's not a question of us giving an offering. You must give with the right attitude. It's not a question of us giving So the, the offering is the form. The attitude is the life behind it. The motive behind it. So spirituality is both a science and an art. So in the science of spirituality, that's where you find the laws of the spirit. That's where you find the principles of the spirit. The laws and the principles of the spirit are the forces that release the wisdom of God. They release the power of God. You know, when it was, it, was speak, it, was, it was speaking, I think, in Zechariah or, or Malachi, he said, you don't give this kind of offering. You don't give a blind goat to God as offering. A blind goat or a crippled goat. You bring a lamb without blemish. You can have the right attitude, but if something is physically wrong with your goat, God will not accept it. Do you know even the village gods? The priest will first check the gods. They say, open the teeth. <laughs> they will check whether I sick. Say, ah, no. Our God will not accept this. Even village gods. They have, they'll tell you white cock. <laughs> Pure white cock without any single... They specify because the form is as important as the principle that drives it. So, so Pentecostals... We, 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 we understand the, the laws and the principles and we neglect the form. Orthodox people understand the form. They've lost the fire. They've lost the substance. So there's a problem. So anybody that will succeed here must go to the Orthodox to understand the form. Then come to the Pentecostal to understand the spirit and combine it. Charity is important. Giving food to the hungry is important. As in carrying food and giving to the hungry is important. The Orthodox still do it. But the Pentecostals, we are too, we are lost in the spirit. Everything we can just, we just start praying in tongues. Every problem can be solved by tongues. <laughs> Every problem. They just, let's do six hours. When you listen well, the answer is in, is in something you should carry with your hand physically to go and do physically. Now, the problem is that most times we pray in tongues, we don't listen. That's a problem with a lot of open customs. We pray in tongues a lot, but we don't listen. It's a monologue. One way traffic. Do you know what Yoruba is called radio? Asoro, Magbesi. That's what they call radio in Yoruba. That is a, an equipment that talks, but you don't talk back to it. <laughs> so a lot of people are radios. <laughs> but these days, they are now, they, when they, had, they took wisdom, and now they're doing phoning. They said, We've been talking since morning. Okay, now you, you two now can talk in, talk back. So for the Pentecostals, tongues can solve all things. When the answer to your prayer is that you should be sleeping extra one hour every day, for the next six months, your health will pick up. That's a word for someone. Just add one extra hour to the time you sleep. In the next six months, your blood pressure will come down without drugs. 
But he said, you think you can solve it by tongues? Man, te be su kamba, kamba, kamba. It will be going up. <laughs> so the science of spirituality releases the laws that powers the kingdom. That is where you see the wisdom of God in display. That's where you see the grace of God in display. That is where you see the glory of God in display. So we must understand accurately the science and the hearts of spirituality. And one of the things that you also put at the back of your mind is that God is the source of all intelligence. God is the source of all wisdom. God is the source of all power. The more you know him, the more of his power you know. The more you know him, the more intelligent you become. The more you know him, the more glorious you become. God is the source of all wisdom. God is the source of all intelligence. Any intelligence that you see on the face of the earth proceeded from God. Yes, yeah, some of them have been corrupted, but it still proceeded from God. And that was why God took his time to write the Bible. The Bible was intentionally written, was deliberately written by God, moving men down the ages to put in a volume his mind for us. Let me tell you one of the abilities of the Bible. The Bible, the scriptures according to Paul, has the ability to make wise. I think the principal ability in scripture, I just saw that this morning. I just studying this morning and, and it just jumped at me. That the principal ability contained in scriptures is the ability to make wise. That was the principal ability in scriptures. Do you know why Adam, why Eve was deceived? Because Satan told her that she can obtain wisdom. Do you know the genesis of all problems? began because man was looking for wisdom. He said, God knows that if you, he said, let's look at it. Genesis. Genesis 3. He said, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to, to make one wise, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Because it was not food that was her problem. She had food already. It was not that she could not see it. She could see it already. She could see it with the eyes. Was, was she blind to it? She could see it. Was she hungry? She wasn't. She was, she was eating food. She could see the only thing that she didn't have was wisdom. That she thought she did not have. And a tree to desire to make. And she took of the hour and did eat and gave us unto her husband with her. And he did eat. So the quest of, for wisdom was what caused man to hear in the first place. So God has okay, fine. I'm going to now give you real wisdom. So he now wrote the Bible and I said, well, by looking at scriptures, meditating on scriptures, applying the things you read in scriptures, you enter into wisdom. So true spiritual wisdom is the same thing as spiritual intelligence. So the intention of God for giving us the scriptures 
is for us to have the, the material that can educate our minds. The resources that can feed our spirit. The resources, the materials that we need to illuminate our hearts. Until the life, the light of life shines through within us. And every trace of darkness is destroyed. It says, search the scriptures until the day dawns and the day star arises in your heart. Until the day star arises in your heart. So the scriptures were given to us primarily to make us spiritually intelligent. And we've established already that what releases the power of God, the laws of God. So another name for the Bible is the book of the law. That is the book that contains all the laws that if you obey them, if you follow them, you will see the glory of God. Say this book of the law must not depart from your interaction. Your consideration, from your meditation, from your eyes, from your mouth, from your heart. You must be full of the content of this book. So that in all that you do, the book is guiding you. That is the only way to prosper. That is the only way to be in good health. The problem is not that God cannot save. It's not that God cannot do things for us. It's that we are not willing to align ourselves with him. The Bible is the book of the law. And when people hear the law, they say, Ten Commandments, thou shalt not. No. Laws are things, laws, there are two sides to every law. To laws generally, to the body of laws. The things you do and the things you don't do. The things you do, the things you don't do. You know, but God had to start telling us the things not to do. But in the things not to do, you also see the things to do. You should not covet your husband, your neighbor's wife. So the, the mind, when the mind hears the word law, the only thing that comes to it is the things not to do, the things that you'll be punished if you do. But indeed, the laws are the things we need to do to make progress. Like the law we talked about earlier on, the law of aerodynamics. When gravity was discovered, science as we know it today was born. Now, the day this gravity was discovered was not the day gravity was created. Gravity was always, was always there. Yeah, no, I, I don't think um, the, that guy was the one that discovered it. He was the first to document it. He was the first to propagate it. Now, somebody might not agree with me. But I want to think that there were scientists before him who did a lot of things knowing that gravity was there, but they didn't document. There are a lot of medicine in our own culture there are a lot of potent medicine that can heal anything in our culture. In our, in our university, there is one, one professor. He's a, he's a pharmacist. He has branched into another uh, field of, of pharma, um, pharmaceutical sciences where he uses herbs. So students used to go and buy Agbo. I'm not kidding you. If you so if you have malaria, he has a concoction for it. And he uses native herbs to produce those concoctions in the pharmaceutical department, in pharmacy department. How many of us remember that? Yeah. He's there. You go there. Me, I don't need, I don't need it, so I didn't go. But I used to hear. So you drink it. There are some, some native concoctions. When you drink it, if you have fever, the fever will jump out. <laughs> Jump out straight. 
the, the, those men, they, they know, they can tell you the effect. That take one bottle, just take one spoon. <laughs> he said you will sneeze three times. <laughs> but the problem is that those things are not documented. They don't know the name of the chemical inside. They don't have lab. And the, the, the downside of those drugs is that the at times they can do overdose. They don't know how to regulate. Apart from, so forget it. Medicine is not, is not the Oibos that have medicine. Our fathers to have. But they also support it with our spirit. <laughs> because they tell you that as you are cutting the leaf, you must say this. If you don't say it, it won't work. <laughs> so that is why um, medical science in Africa has not really progressed. Other than that, our people too are trying. So a lot of discoveries have been made here to cure some of the diseases that even the whites are struggling with. But the problem is that the people didn't document it. And if you don't document, you can't propagate. And it's still, even in place, some places in Africa, the only way to transmit knowledge is by saying it with the mouth. That's just a challenge. Our people don't know how to write. So the advantage that they had in, in the West is that they know how to write, they document, and they transmit the information that they have. And the more we learn from the body of existing knowledge, we should produce better results than the generation that handed down those knowledge. Do you know if Henry Ford comes out of his grave now, he'll be proud of cars. What he calls a car is not a car. You, can, you, can, you should not call that a car. It's a contraption <laughs> of metal. <laughs> the tires of their car were like bicycle tires. If you see the first aircraft, They use the pilots lie down to fly it. <laughs> the first aircraft they used to push it. They'll push it to start. As in, as in push to start. <laughs> now imagine they are still there. So the same thing, the Bible contains laws. That you must discover. You know, one of the things, one of the first things that I heard when I became a Christian was that they said there are some things that can be taught. There are things that have to be caught. So there are some things in this kingdom we can teach you, but we can't bring you into them. We can we can only explain it to you, but you have to see it to have it. The guy said, I want this. He said, ah, what you are asking for is hard. If your eyes don't open to see, it's not yours. He says, we behold him as in a glass. Now you can be looking at the glass. It is what you see that you become. If you see nothing, you become nothing. As we behold him as in a glass, if we see nothing in that glass, we cannot change from glory to glory. So in this kingdom, there are some things you need to see. So, but the knowledge of God brings you to that place where your eyes just open in a moment. You know, it takes a twinkling of an eye in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye for us to change in this kingdom. You didn't hear that. There, there are some, some things that we are looking for, they will just happen in a moment. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, your status will just change. So it is very, very important for us to understand that the Bible was given to us in order for us to discover the laws that drives everything that we have to do on the face of the earth. If you are called to do business, there is, way, there is a way, there is the way, not a way. There is the way to do business based on scriptures. 
If you are called to ministry, there is the way to do ministry based on scriptures. If you are married, there is the way to be married. If you are single, there is a way to be single. If you are engaged, there is a way to be engaged. Now, when we don't know the way to do it, we will experience crises on the face of the earth. So, the more you know in that area of life that God has called you to operate, the better the results you produce. And the knowledge grows when your understanding of the laws that govern those things grow. There is a how to relate. There is a way, the way to relate with big men. Is the same. Pre- Let me tell you one thing about big men. Every big man is suspecting everybody that comes to them. Somebody says on Twitter something the other day that in Nigeria, if you go to the office of a political, a public, or a, a, um, a public office holder, a politician, that eighty to ninety percent of the people that come to their offices beg them for money. That is eighty to ninety percent of people that enters the office of a big man, in quote in Nigeria. He's going there for, to look for something. Oh, sir, we need... Uh, sir, um, yeah, good afternoon. Um, um, my son. My son just finished NYC. Do you know how many CVs they've given him? People used to tell me that, you know people. You know a lot of people in government. Oh, you know people. And indeed, I know people. But I don't ask them for anything. If I must even ask, I don't even do. The day you now start asking for a contract, you lost your respect. As in, I know head of agencies, head of big government agencies that, do, that give out contracts in billions. I have not begged him for one naira. There's one of them, the head of one big government agency that he was begging me, he was telling me, okay, come and visit me, come and visit me. So I didn't go. He now called me and said, okay, today I'm coming to your house. He said, you, you, if you don't come, I'll come to your house. Let me come and know your house. I said, no, you don't have to come, sir. I'll come to your house. So we just managed to go there. When I go to his office, I don't even do like I know him. That we are so close. If they tell me sit here, I'll sit. He says in the meeting, I'll wait. I can, at times, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I'm waiting. He'll come. He'll come out. Oh, our pastor. he come inside. We'll talk. And the people we see, his office people will see the way he treats me. I'm like, ah. But okay, one of the, the people come and to me and say, but sir, oh, God loves you, but you don't do like you know him very well. I say, eh, because he will not be here forever. Most times when people are in office, I don't even call them. It is when they leave. I'll go and greet. Because what do you want to give me then? Nothing. There's an how to relate with big men. When I was getting married, I was praying that nobody, that the people that can one day say that they helped me to marry should not give me anything. That's, those are my prayer you'll be praying. The God, anybody on my path, that we one day take glory for the things you are doing in my life. Remove them. Look. Look. Let me tell you. It is better. Look. Nobody should say they made Abraham rich. There are discovery. Look, it is when you read the Bible. You will see that. There are times God by himself removes some people from your life. Takes away some things from your life. So that nobody can tomorrow say they made you. If anybody will give you anything, let it be that God was the one that made them give you. Not that you want to beg. I have never asked for anything from anyone that they didn't give me. You know why? There's an how to ask. God must lead you to ask. If God leads you to ask, they will give you. Confirmed. Look, Jesus demonstrated it. He needed an has. He said, go. When you get there, you see it tight. He said, bring it. He said, if anybody asks you, tell him. The Lord. 
you, you look, if they went to the wrong guys, they would have beaten them. Do you understand? They, I don't think that was the only house in the city that was tied. If they are going to the wrong house, they will beat them. The other time they wanted to eat, he said, go, when you see you enter the house, tell the owner of the house that I want to eat in his house today. When they went there, they did it because that was the one God has provided. So anything you need, there is, God has provided it. It's for you to know where the provision is. Align yourself. If you go there, you get the result. But not that you now bring out your phone. Now we scroll and say, all the big men in my phone, let me spell write their name. I need 10 million now. So if I ask 10 people for 1 million, they'll give me. How do you get 10 million? Knowing where the 10 million has provided by the hand of God. Because you can call the richest man on your list, he won't give you. Because God has not allowed him. You know, there, there was someone that was supposed to give us some money when we were getting married. You know what the Holy Spirit told me? He said, he will not give you anything because I will prevent him. <laughs> and people made promises. Oh, they made. And this one is just by the side for those of you that are planning to get married. When you are getting married, people make promises. But more than half of them will not fulfill it. And don't be, don't be bitter. They wanted to, but God did not allow. <laughs> It's only the people that God allows that can bring substance to you. Not people tomorrow that will not sit over you and they will not be demanding royalty. <laughs> not be demanding royalty. That's a passport you said. We have some rich men in church. They'll give you, they'll give you gifts so that they, they can sit in front. That if you don't allow you, you are not careful. They'll start dictating, say, Pastor, you can't preach that. You can't, you can't, you can't be preaching that. That message is too strong. <laughs> There's an how to operate in this kingdom. And the how to operate in this kingdom is a, is a direct product of the laws of the Spirit. And the laws of the Spirit, when obeyed, makes one spiritually intelligent. So the Bible contains the laws that we must understand. The laws that we must be mindful to obey. The laws that we must apply in our everyday life. The laws that we'll be mindful to understand, be mindful to obey, and be mindful to apply in our everyday life. That is what the Bible contains for you. What has the Bible said about this? What has the Bible said about disputes? What has the Bible said about that? What has the Bible said about marriage, about children, about, about sex? If there is one thing that is troubling our generation is sex. We, we live in an oversexed generation. Advertisement of toothpaste, nudity. Uh, no, tooth, tooth, is it toothpaste that you are selling or what? The whole erotic dance that goes into advertising close up. Must they kiss? The other day we were watching one. My wife said, what are they trying to sell now? <laughs> it was locks. Locks. He just did this. Did, ah. my, my wife said, what are they trying to sell to us? I said, it's soap. It's soap. <laughs> <laughs> Satan is bombarding your mind. <laughs> you have to bombard it with God. Let me tell you, the bombarding of your mind is free. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you'll be bombarded. And those of you that have the... You see, let me tell you something. You are deceiving yourself to think that you are strong. You sit before channel O. Or trace. You think you're strong. So you're... <laughs> I, me, your pastor cannot. I can't survive five minutes of channel O. I can't. 
my mind will be twisted. Because I used to listen to music a lot. And let me tell you something. Music have satanic content in them. But you might not agree. There are like four or five women in the world right now that are idols. They are, they are sex. They, they are they, demons that follow them are nations. They are nations as in principalities. Demonic hierarchy of all others. Follow them. Their pictures are demonic. Then you now sit down before their music video two hours. Download it. Demons have infested your soul. <laughs> Mental viruses inside you. Even the blood of Jesus will walk over time. <laughs> As in that is consciously poisoning your own mind with your two eyes open. How can you do that? There was one time somebody came to me. I just put it. I said, for what? In this house? Can I see channel? We even removed the decoder. Just removed it. Because it will be disastrous when I get to heaven. God now tell me that the reason why they are denying me access is because I was watching too much TV. It will pain me. <laughs> so we've gone back to NTA. I'm telling you, went here. Very boring. It's okay. I like it like that. I'm back to NTA. I was watching network news yesterday. <laughs> Let me know what's going on in Nigeria. <laughs> because the events on CNN are scary. And let me stay with NTA. <laughs> and we're watching one very interesting program is it on NTA. You are joking. The lessons I learned was Bible. <laughs> On it. They, they went to a documentary in a, in a fishing community. Somewhere around, I think, local jar access. A fishing community. They were interviewing fishermen. They were telling the stories of fishing techniques and all of that. And while I was watching, I was like, what program is this? <laughs> I just heard a voice. I will make you fishers of men. You can't hear that on CNN. <laughs> I will make you fishers of men. And the fisherman said that to be a, for you to be a successful fisherman, you must be ready to be, you work very hard. And what did I learn from that? That for you to win souls, you know, the first thing Jesus told is that we say, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. So I was, I was gingered again to evangelism. So in all you're watching, watch NTA. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So we must be mindful of the laws of God so that we can understand them, so that we can obey them, so that we can apply them where necessary. True spiritual intelligence is to come into a perfect understanding of all the things that make God, God. When you begin to come into a perfect understanding of the things that makes God, God. You see, one of the things about God that, that the, the Holy Spirit started making me understand is that God is gentle. The real God is gentle. God is gentle. God is not, is not vengeful. He's, he's a God of justice. But he's gentle. And you know the funny thing, God will not even judge anyone. <laughs> because if he judges, his love is too much, he will forgive everybody. So he's reserving it for you to judge <laughs> Because you know that you want justice. He said, we sit before thrones and judge. Evil angels. You know God is the judge, but he's not the one that will do the judgment. Because if he comes, he will forgive everybody. You know, he said, all your sins are forgiven. 
So now say, God, you know what? You will not judge because we know you. You forgive. <laughs> That's God. Though. Is this kind of just imagine if you go to court, the justice is now crying. You know, judge, a justice. <laughs> See, they now say, Oh, I say, oh, I said it. He's a good man. <laughs> You know that was not allowed. You must never show emotion. But God cannot must show emotion. So he said, you know what? He has reserved all judgment to us. Jesus said, he said they will sit before 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Paul was saying also, he said, we will be the ones to judge angels. So the real judgment, God is the judge where he has delegated that, that authority to us. Because he's too kind. That's why I said, if anybody offends you, forgive them. Even if they offend you 490 times a day, forgive them. The capacity of God to forgive is deeper than the sea. The more you know him, the more like him you become. He is spiritually intelligent that understands the nature of God. Because the, way, the more we see him, the more like him we become. We are changed into what we see in God. When you discover love in him, you become loving. When you discover peace in him, you enter peace. When you discover prosperity in him, you become prosperous. When you discover power in him, you, you, you enter into power. When you discover wisdom in him, you enter into wisdom. When you discover light in him, you enter into light. When you discover holiness in him, you enter into holiness. The more of God you know, the more like God you become. So true spiritual intelligence is entering into the software of God. The substance of God is a merciful God. He doesn't relate with us based on who we are, what we've done. The Bible says that he allows his rain to fall on the field of the righteous and the wicked. His sun to shine on everybody's field. God does not have a problem if the richest man in the world is not born again. He doesn't have a problem with that. He doesn't have a problem with that. I, I think it's, act, it's actually not true theology to begin to think that, okay, you know what? Um, the richest people must be Christians. You know the truth? The laws there are for everybody to obtain. So he said, he said look, everybody is served by the field. It is the person that knows how to maximize the laws that will, that will prosper. If you have a field, I have a field, you are born again, I'm not. If you plant your field, if I, if I plant my field, you don't plant your own, you, you'll be hungry, you'll, you'll come and buy bread from me. I'll sell to you, collect the money that you don't have. And God will not be angry with it. That's what Jesus said. He said the children of, of this world are wiser than the children of the kingdom. But in the church, he can discriminate. You didn't hear that. In the church. Because we're all his children. If a child is nice, one is not, you can knock the one of the you can knock the elder the one that is not nice. Then you leave the one that is nice. In the church. But in the world, is it no problem? You know, you can see somebody's son breaking you can't you don't have any business. You say it's not my son. Maybe his father like it like that. But other than that, look, let me tell you something. A lot of people will be shocked when they get to heaven. You will see some people there like, what? How did they make it? What? What? Look at the, the, that bad guy that died with him. That, that died with Jesus. He was, he was already on his way to hell. Last minute, they gave him a ticket. He didn't say, lost prayer. And Lord Jesus, he didn't say that. He just say, Alpha, bros, don't forget me. He said, you are, he said, even now, you are following me. Even now, the, the fact that you just called me bros, you have entered. <laughs> that was all. The guy didn't even, the, the guy doesn't even understand what he was saying. You don't need to understand it. 
is too merciful because he's not desirous for anyone to perish. You know what I see people on Twitter calling for blood? They started selecting prisons people will go to. He said, Desiani should go to Yola prison. He said, ah, yes, no. I said, he said, which prison should Desiani go to? And somebody said, Yola. I said, no. Um, Bauchi. Um, kiri kiri. Ah, no, that one is too fine. <laughs> said, Let her go to my degree prison. Yes, that is better. Then they went to meet them, but I said, well, if you don't, look, if you don't, you must, we want to see blood. You must kill people. You must, you, ah, people must suffer. They say, ah, this army, what did she do? That's why when Moses was writing the law, God said, look, this is not what we want to write to, but I know the people. If we don't write it like that, they will not agree. Yeah, he came out. He don't want to use, he, said, he said we should not divorce. Moses said we should divorce. What you Jesus said, look, let me tell you. I was there when they were writing it. The, this is not the real law. But because of the way your heart is programmed, if we don't write it like this, you will not understand. But God does not want anyone to divorce. But he's afraid of you people. Self. That, that was what Jesus was saying in essence. He said, he said because of the hardness of your heart. He said, okay, no, if your wife says divorce. He said, but in the beginning it was not so. That is the danger of democracy. That's the only downside of democracy. Because if the majority say men can marry men, men will start marrying men. Yeah? It's a democracy. So don't be surprised. In another 50 years. In this Nigeria. Don't be surprised. Because I seen in the scripture, he said, said two men will be sleeping. One will be taken. One will be left. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Am I the one that wrote the Bible? <laughs> say two men will be sleeping. Two men. I have not slept with a man. For a long time, how, how can I be in the same on the same bed with a man doing what? Sleeping. Two men on the same bed sleeping. No, go sleep. No. <laughs> no. It's not two students. The Bible is two students. <laughs> men sleeping. One will be taken, one will be left. And let me tell you something. That is not talking about the rapture, in case you don't know. Because a long time we think the rapture. He said, look, a time is God will be so angry, we kill one, leave one. That's what we're saying there. He said, it's like the day of Noah. He, look, when you go and read Revelation properly, you understand that there is time some forces will come, half of the earth will die. That's what the Bible is saying there. They think that is a rapture. But that's not the rapture. Go and read Revelation. When you say two men, we say one will be grinding, one will be gone. It is not that they will rapture and leave one. That's not what the Bible is saying there. Because the wickedness will be so heavy, the half of the earth can die at once. That's what the Bible is saying there. But a long time, even me, I used to think that eh, rapture, they will be sleeping, they will be taking. No, that's not what the Bible is saying there. And that's the danger of democracy. And that's why Satan is advancing democracy very strong. It will be established. The whole earth will become democratic. How, did God, how was God kicked out of Egypt? Uh, sorry, of Israel. In the days of Samuel. Was it not democracy? By democracy, the people dethroned God. Even God yielded to their desire. You don't understand. Yeah, it is still the best form of governance that guarantees freedom of certain things. Because other countries where democracy, yeah, they are, they are, so because, because people are beginning to say, okay, I am preaching against democracy. I am for democracy. I believe in democracy. I am a proponent. I voted in the last election. So don't get me wrong. Because democracy is still the best thing that mankind has invented in terms of governance. It's better than any other form of governance, governance that we know. But there are still dangers in it. 
Because if the majority say something is right, even if it is wrong, it becomes right. That's the only danger of it. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's very important for us to ensure that we we are knowledgeable in all things. One of the things that Paul said, one of the driving things behind the letters of Paul is to destroy ignorance. He said, be not ignorant. Be not ignorant. So spiritual intelligence has two sides to it. Understanding the realm of God, understanding the programs of hell. Say, be not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Because the weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are spiritual. So spirituality also, spiritual intelligence also covers an understanding of the program, the plans, the wisdom, the resources of God, and also the devices of the enemy. Let me give you something for free. Anytime you begin to feel angry. No Satan is in your house. The one way to detect satanic activities or an attack is coming or Satan wants to prevent something, it will stir up freshly anger in your heart. Anytime something happens and you are angry with the person that you love, maybe with your wife, with your brother, with your friend, or a critical relation in your life, you attack it by anger. Anger is a tool in the hands of the enemy to quench the programs of God in the life of a man. You must not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. That he uses anger. He can use loss. He can use depression. He can even use joy. He can use lounging. Just lounging. So you must not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Because ignorance is the absence of knowledge. And when knowledge is absent, intelligence is destroyed. That's what they call intelligence gathering. Understanding what the enemy is planning before they execute it. When you understand the program and the plans of the enemy, you understand the armory of the enemy, you prepare for them when they attack. The reason why America won the Second World War was because they, 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 they were developing a weapon. The Germans knew they were building something, but they didn't know what they were building. They knew they were building something. But they didn't know what they were building. So intelligence gathering, exponage they call it, in, involves understanding the arms in the hands of your enemy. Then you prepare what you need to quench it when they deploy it. So that when America dropped the first one in Nagasaki, boom. Eh? What is this? <laughs> what manner of bomb is this? They thought it was a flu. They dropped the second one the next day. Boom! Hiroshima. We are not fighting again. <laughs> we are not fighting again. The end. Japanese judges say we are not fighting again. So Hitler said, if they drop this one in Berlin, that's the end. They just they told the Europeans, they said, look, we, 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 we still have, we'll bring it to you, we'll drop, we'll drop. He said, no, you don't need to. It's over. Be not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Let's look at the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 11. He said, lest Satan should take an advantage of us, if for we are not ignorant of his devices. He said, the reason why Satan cannot take advantage of us is because we are not ignorant of his devices. So in other words, if you are ignorant of his devices, he will take advantage of you. If you are ignorant of his devices, he will take advantage of you. 
So spiritual intelligence gives us the advantage over the devil. For we know what he's doing. We know what he's planning. We know what he's able to do. We know his abilities. We know his powers. We know his plans. We know what he's capable of deploying. When we are not ignorant of what he's doing. But when we are ignorant of what he's doing, he can lord it over us. So a truly spiritual man is fully armed with a weapon in Christ and fully knowledgeable of the programs of the devil. You know everything that is yours in God and you are up to date with what Satan is doing on the face of the earth or around you. Anytime people come to my office angry, oh, my husband did this, my wife did that, yeah, yeah, you know, ha, ha. I say, relax. Breathe in, breathe out. Satan is doing something in your house now. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, Satan is in your house right now. He has gotten your husband, and you two are following. <laughs> How can you be mad with your wife? For what? talking to me like that. I married you. We know. Relax. You have to go back to your father's house. To which house? This is my house. You can go to your father's house. (laughs) You know, I said something on Sunday that this season, be very careful of legitimate anger. What's legitimate? An anger that you can prove and justify. With scriptures. <laughs> Somebody came to see me after the service and said, This Abraham and Lost story you said is very important too. God told me, said, I as in I drew a line of, I said, He will never enter my office again. Never. I will never dare to do with him again. Abraham, thank God for Abraham and Lot. <laughs> see, because Abraham told Lot, choose you where you want to be. Me, I'll be on my own. You let me give you another strong one in scriptures. Laban and Jacob, they gathered stone. God told them to gather stone. They ate. He said, from today, you will not cross over this stone to where I am. I will not cross over this stone to where you are. That's Old Testament. Just imagine if Jesus and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost had gathered stones too. He said, Adam and Eve, (laughs) for these things that you did, you and your children, you cannot cross this stone over. That's the end. So relax. We must be like God that goes about looking for reconciliation. Be careful of legitimate Bible-based anger. Offense that you can justify with six scriptures. Why you must stay angry and not have anything to do with the person again. Such people go and buy them, carry a peace offering to them. And say, take. Praise the name of the Lord. Where you are spiritually intelligent, fear is destroyed. We are spiritually intelligent or prayed, God is enthroned. Spiritual intelligence guarantees obedience, guarantees holiness, guarantees godliness, guarantees the glory of God. I want you to just bow your head in the moment and talk to God. ahead when every heart confesses your name we're pressing on towards that day we're never gonna stop